Hello everyone and welcome. We're so glad you've joined us to hear about a very unique opportunity. I'm teacher Maria von Andersack. And I'm Apostle Chanel Nyman. We want to talk to you about the new season of change and renewal that God started and how you can be a part of it. We're not going to talk about what God might do someday because a new shift that is taking place is happening right now and you don't want to miss your opportunity to get involved. To get started, we need to take you through a little bit of background that will put God's new agenda for change into perspective. We're going to start with a problem and then we're going to work our way to God's solution. Would it surprise you to know that there are dozens of reports floating around on the internet that deal with the eroding away of faith? And actually, isn't it more than like hundreds of reports or thousands, there's thousands of these kinds of reports bouncing around on the internet that deal with the uh, decline of faith. Exactly, Teacher Maria. I don't think these reports would surprise any of our viewers because you know it in your heart that something is wrong with the church and many believers have been petitioning God to fix it. There's a hunger for change. I've seen an increase in the amount of posts from believers searching for the next step. Amen, Apostle Chanel, and God has really heard those prayers. And we're going to get into God's timely fix in just a moment. But before we do, it's so helpful to pinpoint the reason why your faith might have that let down feeling. We're going to show you a number of responses that are quite common from believers. You can read through this list with us. Pick out the responses that best describe your experience or pencil into your notepad something that you've petitioned God about. Let's start with the first response because it's the most common one we hear. Many believers say, the experience I get attending church, either physically or online, doesn't last. I don't feel God is transforming my life. And number two, many believers say, there's something missing from my faith. I just don't know what it is. And number three, I feel I let God down and I just want to give up. And number four, I don't feel connected to others when, uh, when I go to church. And again, remember that church includes online gatherings and conferences. And number five, I don't feel connected to God when I'm at church. And finally, number six, and this is a really big one, I am so confused with so many Christian denominations offering so many conflicting truths. You've hit the target on these points, Teacher Maria, and they've been discussed so much from every possible angle that this territory is starting to look like a threadbare carpet. This illustration is great because it points out that believers never get anywhere. The endless discussions on these topics only lead believers in circles as they try to fill their spiritual wish list. Did you know that everyone who is caught in the middle of this confusion has a spiritual wish list? Let's view the list together. As you can see, we're going to share the top three things that most people are seeking God about. And again, you can read through the list with us and pick out the responses that best describe what's on your spiritual wish list or pencil into your notepad something that you've petitioned God about. Number one, I want to know God's purpose for my life. Number two, I want to know what my spiritual gifts are and how to use them. And number three, I want to know how spiritual warfare takes place. So the million dollar question is, what's missing from your faith? Oh sure, changes can be made, but here's what change looks like when it's not seen from God's perspective. If having a large church is the problem, we can switch over to smaller gatherings again. Or if worship service is the problem, we can change a few things, maybe more music, maybe less music. But none of these changes will fill the gaps in your faith, nor will they help you know God's purpose for your life. Let's look at this spiritual map to get some more perspective. As you can see, this little guy has a very confused look on his face. And that's because he's been given different teachings about how to reach God. But the teachings lead him in different directions. 
and some paths clearly lead him back to where he started. Anyone would be confused with this map of faith. What God is showing the church is that change is possible in any number of ways as people try different things. But man's idea of change is not transition to covenant, which is God's true purpose. That's a vital takeaway point right there. Man's idea of change is not transition to covenant. What we saw in this guy's map of faith, which is a maze really, is that the endless rounds of changing this or that never brought transformation. That's right. Um, what God is doing is bringing out into the open so very clearly for everyone to see that he is not the author of this confusion and that he did not design faith in this confusing way. What we're seeing is an awakening taking place and it is so wonderful. Awakening is a good thing. That means God is stirring hearts. You know, so many believers write in and, and you see it online in posts. They're, they're sharing the dreams and visions that they've received about the soon coming of Jesus Christ. And they experience this urgency like a fire burning inside their heart and they want to know what can I do to prepare myself? To get the church ready, God had to do some restoration. And restoration is what Second Eighth Week Ministries is all about. Restoration is taking place right now. God restored the church to the fullness of Christ. And you know what? That means that restoration is a package deal. The restoration of your faith covers these four things. The restoration of the Apostle's office. The restoration of Jesus' foundation of truth. The restoration of Jesus' new covenant. And the restoration of Jesus' altar and priesthood. Everything is included in God's restoration. God left nothing out, nothing undone, and left nothing to the imagination for us to figure out on our own. This is not trial and error. Each point of restoration is a regifting of the church and a point of transition. That's right, and at the heart of this is a restoration of Jesus' covenant and God's plan for you to make the transition into covenant. And just to add, God's restored government is included in the restoration of the Apostles' office. God's government is made up of His Apostles, Prophets, Evangelists, Pastors, and Teachers who have answered the call in this new apostolic season of change and renewal to transition the church back to the fullness of Christ. We're here to serve you. You know what? I am so glad that you brought out the restoration of all five callings unified into one spiritual government of God. That is such a miracle, unique miracle for, for the church today. No calling has been left behind. Have you been hearing God's call? Do you want to take the next step? We've put together a unique online course called IDCCST, which stands for God's Intelligent Design for Christ-Centered Spiritual Transformation. You can register for the new course on our new website at saw.org. Registration is free and the online materials are free. Don't miss out. Go and register. That's right. We don't want anyone to miss out on God's new season of change and renewal. Our IDCCST course is a fully integrated learning experience with the anointing. In addition, our spiritual life coaches are equipped by God to nurture your faith and pray with you and answer questions at every step along the way. We'll, we'll see, see you inside, inside the course. course.